wasn't always easy, and they had to do it without their captain, but the Boston Bruins taking game one against the Florida Panthers, and we are going to break it down on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things Spoked B. Thanks so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It is Tuesday, April 18th. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Quick reminder as well, you can find the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Locked NHL Bruins. And you can find me, my hockey tweets and dad jokes at Ian C. McLaren. And I'm very excited to be joined on the podcast today by man, someone whose uh, Bruins coverage I've been following for years. We worked together briefly uh, at the Hockey Writers back in the day, and he's working on a very special new project that we can touch on uh, in a little bit. But welcome to the podcast, uh, Mike McCauley. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing well, Ian. Thanks so much for having me on. No problem. It's been a, a long time coming. I was thinking the other day about, yeah, your your work for the Hockey Writers back in the day. You were instrumental in helping getting me connected there, and uh, you're partially responsible for this podcast, I guess. So thanks so much, Mike, for, for that. And uh, and how you been? How, how are things going? Things are going great. Well, well I'm, I'm honored, first and foremost. I, I think what you're doing with this podcast is awesome. I'm, I'm a big fan of it, so I really appreciate the work you're putting thank in. You, thank you. Um, you know, things, things are going great. Um, have stepped away from hockey writing for a little bit, um, as you know, and then came back this year, been covering this, the, the team for a project now um, since the off season. So um, yeah, just really excited. And uh, so last night, game one against the Florida Panthers, obviously the big news prior to puck drop was that Patrice Bergeron would not be in the lineup uh, due to reported illness that's going around a bug that uh, some other guys have been suffering from as well uh they still went out got the job done let's start with overall impressions uh from the Bruins game one win over the Panthers last night yeah I I think you saw a I think you saw a good Bruins effort um after the game Jim Montgomery had said that this was a C plus effort for him um I get that. And I think that there were a lot of gaps in the Bruins games. I think one of the most important things that happened that, that you should be aware of obviously is that a lot of the Bruins, I think were playing sick. Mm -hmm. Um, Every time you saw the camera focus on Linus Elmark, (laughs) poor, poor guy, he was, he did not look great. Mm -hmm. Um, They'll never confirm who exactly had the bug or didn't have a bug until afterwards. Obviously we know it's something that Pasternak had, Lauko had, uh, Swayman. It went around the room quite a bit. Um, so I, I, I think all things considered, you saw a good Bruins effort. It was not a great mm-hmm. Bruins effort. I thought the Panthers played great. Um, I gotta be honest with you. I think their game plan going into this game was to really try to disrupt the Bruins, get under their skin best mm-hmm. as they can. Um, they, they did that. And, you know, I, I, I wonder if the Panthers can get to another level, can take their game to another level. I, I think they we might be close to seeing this is the this is their peak right now mm-hmm. as far as performance is concerned. Right. And obviously, you know, Sam Bennett being out, um, you, you know, Barkoff was a ghost last night. That's not going to happen every game. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think the Bruins have room to to improve. So sure. a good win, you know, as we've seen all season long, the Bruins find ways to win, um, and and that's that was certainly the case last night. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was a weird one. Like Florida often looked like the better team. Uh, mm-hmm. The numbers support that in terms of shots, the underlying numbers as well. 
but it also could have been like a six one game if it had been for for Alex Lyon making some incredible saves, particularly on Trent Frederick on a couple two on ones with Taylor Hall. Um, like you said, if they hadn't come out and tried to be getting under Boston's skin and maybe a bit too aggressively taking those early penalties, it could, it could have been a different story if Boston hadn't got that early uh, early power play goal. It seemed to me, I don't know if, same for you, there could have been some nerves for some of the newer Bruins making their playoff debuts. Tyler Bertuzzi aside, we'll talk about him in a bit, mm-hmm. but uh, Dmitry Orlov made a couple iffy plays leading to that goal by Matthew Kachuk. I thought Pavel Zaka was up and down as well, uh, and literally up and down the lineup. Um, and the Panthers were playing more maybe with, with nothing to lose as the, the underdog role that they're embracing. Uh, did you see any of that? Did you see some kind of nerves or, or guys deferring without Bergeron in the lineup, uh, just not knowing exactly how to handle the moment maybe? Yeah, I, I think that's legitimate. Um, I, it's interesting because the Bruins play a, a slightly different way when Bergeron's not in the lineup. And mm. I think just having his presence there does something to the team. And it's, it, you know, it's it's a very, obviously it's a calming presence for them as the captain. He's the one who sets the tone mm. um, on the ice, off the ice. Um, I, I don't know if I saw jitters too much. Okay. Um, I do think the, the Orloff... Um, that that the Arloff play leading to Kachuk's goal, as you said, that was certainly one of them. Um, Bertuzzi was just unbelievable. Yeah. For for me, I think with Pavel Zaka, I think you saw him being placed in a role with line mates that he really wasn't familiar with. And I think right. as he started to play more, you know, they shifted him down with Frederick and um, was it Frederick and Hall on the third line? Yeah, yeah. He he played he, yeah he he played a, a few a few shifts with them and. He was certainly able to do better there, but I think for for him, it's it's more the unfamiliarity with Marshawn mm. DeBrusque as much, right. uh, so much. Um, you you know, I I think the the one player I was I kept waiting for just a little bit more from was Hathaway up mm. until like obviously the 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 goal that got called back, but <laughs> yeah, for a chippy game like that, I expected to see maybe a little bit more from him. Um, Again, back in my head, I'm like, is this one of the guys who's also battling a bug? Like, we'll we'll never know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah true. Felino and Forbort certainly had some rust on them. Um, I, I think Felino especially, especially, I had an opportunity to watch the morning skate when they were in Montreal, um, and boy, he was just on fire. Fel- mm-hmm. Nick Felino, he could have played that that day. He obviously didn't. Um, but I, I was expecting maybe a little bit more from him. So right, I think right, as right. they get acclimated, as the series goes on, for sure, we'll start to see those nerves dissipate. Um, you know, consistency has been a really big key to their success this year. And that's something that they're going to want to tap into. All right. We are going to talk about uh, Derek Forbort, Tyler Bertuzzi, others here in a moment. But first, a quick word about today's sponsor, which is the FanDuel Sportsbook. And FanDuel, the official sportsbook of Locked On, Major League Baseball, the NBA, from Grand Slams, no hitters, double plays, they're all back, and there's no better place to get in on MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. Don't miss your chance to get that no sweat first bet of up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, the official partner of Locked On and Major League Baseball. And I want to thank you again for making Locked on Bruins part of your day every day. Don't forget, speaking of baseball, to check out Locked on Red Sox. And on tomorrow's show, we'll be back to preview uh, game two of this series. Continue our conversation here with with Mike. Uh, You mentioned Derek Forbort before the break. And for me, obviously, I think he was brought in for his shot blocking, his penalty kill prowess. I'm not, I'm not convinced that Matt Grizzlick should be the guy that that takes a seat here. Um, 
what were your thoughts on that decision and uh, whether or not that should stick for, for game two? Yeah, I, I think that's on a lot of people's minds, right? Yeah. Um, Matt Grizzlick is a legitimate top four defenseman mm-hmm. on any on any NHL team, on any yeah. NHL team. And if the biggest knock against him is his size and, you know, not being able to play that physical game to, to, to have that net front presence, um, you know, to in, in the defensive zone at least, yeah, I get it. Um, the Panthers are a fast forechecking team, mm-hmm. so I understand why you'd want to put someone like Derek Forbert in there. Um, you know, he plays physical; he'll block a lot of shots. He's excellent on the penalty kill. Um, you know, the the Panthers, I they're I want to say they're either fifth or sixth. Um, they finished fifth or sixth in offense in the NHL mm-hmm. um, this year. I, f- I forget what exactly it was, but sure, a top ten top ten offense. You want your your big defenders out there. Yeah. Um, I thought he was fine. Um, I, I think I would like to see a little bit more, but I have a hard time trying to fit Grizzly in this lineup without thinking, yeah. okay, well, who else? Who else would you take out? Right? Like, you'd probably look at like, would you take out an Orlov? And like, you probably wouldn't. Um, Clifton, so I, maybe. Yeah, I, I mean. The Forbert Clifton pairing, I think that's the most important pairing for the for the Bruins right now mm. because the opposing team. I mean, Panthers for right now, they're going to see that pairing. They're going to try to expose that matchup a little bit more, play their top guys. You'll see that more, I think, when um, when the Bruins are on the road against Florida at home. Yeah, um, and you know the, they'll have the home team advantage with last right, change. Right, right. Um, but I I I just feel like with Forbert and Clifton. They play a different style of hockey um, than Matt Grizzlick does, and right, right. And you know, right now, I, I don't see Montgomery making the change, um, but I do think you got to get Grizzlick in there eventually. Yeah, and I mean, hopefully, it's a long playoff run, and we all know injuries <laughs> pop up, so he'll likely get in there one way or another. But um, as long as they're winning, probably reluctant to make any changes back there. Yeah. Uh, one change that might have to happen is if Patrice Bergeron, who I think Jim Montgomery called questionable for game two this morning, if he does come back, uh, going back to Tyler Bertuzzi, for me, he was easily one of the best Bruins forwards last night. Two yeah. primary assists, could have had a third one on that Orlov chance, a uh, couple hits, stealing sticks, just disrupting things. Um <laughs> I have loved him playing with David Pasternak. Mm. I see a lot on Twitter about they're the new stepbrothers or the new disgusting yeah. brothers if you're <laughs> a succession uh, person. <laughs> but when Zaka comes off that top line, he mm. had been on the second line with Krejci, Pasternak. Uh, you could have Coyle, Hall, Bertuzzi as arguably the best third line around. Uh, do you keep Bertuzzi with Pasternak and keep that chemistry rolling or do you spread things out? How do you see that shaking out? And if Bergeron does indeed come back for for game two, what a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, um, totally. I mean, we're talking about a third line that would have any like Hall, Bertuzzi, Coyle, Zaka, all guys who are you know legitimate top six forwards. Yeah. Um, this is tough. I think I keep Bertuzzi on that line. Mm. Um, you, you know, obviously Zaka, Krejci, Pasternak has been they've been so successful as a line. Um, I don't know how they finished, but I, I believe it's it's like since the crazy injury, but they were pretty close to being the most frequently played trio, ice trio mm. on the Bruins. Yeah, right. Um, Zaka can play up and down the lineup. I think I'd move Zaka to the third line. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Montgomery will watch this very closely. He's not afraid to make in-game adjustments when needed. Um, I, I, I was playing with the idea of, would you move to Brusque down? And I'm like, I don't think you would. I, oh, yeah. I, I think, I think you'd keep that that top line together. Mm-hmm. Um, the question then becomes, who would you sit? Right. Um, yeah, I was going to mention that afterwards. Yeah, do you take out Felino, Noshik, Hathaway, who is underwhelming, like you said? That's a uh, tough one for sure. Yeah. I I I lean, I lean Felino right now. Yeah. Felino right now. Um, I would have probably said Frederick before last night, but Frederick just had such a great yeah. game. Um, Noshik, I mean, the guys winning faceoffs left, right, and center. Um, a stat that I looked up uh, last night that was crazy to think. 
Um, in the regular season, 87.4% of his starts came in the defensive zone, which is wild. Like, wow. what an underrated center for the Bruins. So, I lean Nick Foligno, um, and then I think for the third line, a combination of, you know, Zaka, Coyle, Hall, um, put mm-hmm. Frederick on the fourth line, maybe. Um, and that's a heavy, heavy hitting fourth line, too. Yeah. And I mean, like you said, good problems to have 17 goal guy on the fourth line. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't really uh, complain about that. Talking about the third line, like I said, I think it's whoever you go with, it's probably the best third line among all playoff teams. Yeah. We saw back in 2011 how important the third line was then. Uh, Charlie Coyle, I think for me, uh, you know, perhaps his contract is greater than his role. But having said that, he was uh, so good last night. And if he can keep that going, I mean, it's hard to see other teams being able to match up with that third line. If he's playing at that level, talk about the importance of, of Charlie Coyle and how good he was for the Bruins last night. So good. I mean, when he is using his size, when he's shooting the puck, he's a different player. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, last night they were saying it was his 100th career playoff game, which I could not believe. <laughs> like, that's, that's you know, I know he had a, he had a long run in, in 2019, obviously. But, um, you know, he's he's one of the tenured guys that we talk about who has seen the ups and downs of this club, has, has gone as far as Game 7 in 2019 and, you know, obviously the last two seasons too, where he knows what it's like to be there. And I think he really elevates his game come playoffs. Um, of course, you're always going to talk about it, it, it. One of my biggest pet peeves in general is just, you know, oh, this person's overpaid or this person and this. Con-. Sure. I mean, right. every, yeah, yeah. you know, you can make an argument for anyone really that they're going to, oh, that they're going to underperform against their contract. Coyle is an expensive third line center. We know that. Right. I yep. do think that, what he brings to the team when he's on is worth that price tag. I think he's seen yep. as a leader in that locker room. Um, you know, the la- the last year, maybe two years of his contract, is that going to look not great? Yeah, it will. Yeah. Um, you know, but it, he's just, he has a lot of untapped potential. And I say mm-hmm. that as, as he's someone as, I think he's in his 31, 32 at this point. Um, <laughs> and and that, that might be, that, that might be wrong too. Um, but I just feel like you think about a player like that who really opens up their game when they are shooting the puck, when they're using their body. Yeah, He had a chance to play with a lot of different line mates this year. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, I, I, I had, a, had a chance to talk to him after the Canadians game and I asked him, you know, you're, ta- you're playing with all these different line mates. Like, how do you develop chemistry? And he said, you know, this has sort of been my role mm-hmm. all my career where I always was moving up and down the lineup. And that's that he sees that as a strength. And, you know, I agree. He's a versatile forward. Um, can play on, can play center, can play the wing. Um, I'm curious if they do, if Montgomery does move forward with the Hall Zaka Coil line. Do you mm. give Zaka some reps at center? Move mm. Coil to the wing. Um, it, it's an option. Um, yep. You know, Coil's done nothing to deserve like a. I, I guess I wouldn't call it demotion, but he's done nothing to deserve removing from being center. But right, hey, right. when he when he plays um, when he plays to his ability, he's he's a he's a real strong asset to the team. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we saw that yeah on full display last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna talk a couple more points about last night's game. A couple more players, maybe even chat about the Toronto Tampa series that begins tonight. But first. A quick word about today's other sponsor, which is Athletic Greens. And Athletic Greens is a fantastic solution for those who are looking to find help with uh, gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you can absorb 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. It costs less than $3 a day, and you're investing in your health. Cheaper than a cold brew habit, and it's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. Think of it as an investment in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. And right now, you can reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Just one scoop in a cup of water every day. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. 
Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you once again for making Lockdown Bruins part of your day. Make sure you're subscribing so that you don't miss a thing here as we continue on our playoff run. And uh, bringing Mike back here, I wanted to talk quickly about Taylor Hall. He, he kind of a forgotten guy. He was injured down the stretch. For me, he's maybe one of the biggest X factors for the Bruins. Again, talking about depth, third line scoring. Um, he is looking to go further in the playoffs than he ever has in his career. Really, you know, carving out his part in this group. Um, where do you see his game at after his injury and how he can contribute to the, the team's success here in the postseason? Yeah, he's still playing a little bit hesitant. Um, you know, I th- there was the, the two-on-one break. I think it was in the first period with he, with he and Frederick. Yeah. You got to shoot the puck. Um, you, you just, and that's, that's always been, that that's always been kind of the knock on him is, is if you have the lane shoot and yeah, there was, I mean, there was an opportunity there, right. Where like you could make an argument, the pass to Frederick was, was warranted, but you know, he finished with no shots on goal mm-hmm. um, last night. And I think with the emergence of someone like Tyler Bertuzzi, you're now yeah. seeing Taylor Hall's ice time slip away 12 minutes mm-hmm. in change last night. Um, He's just missing, and, and I hate saying that because I I I love I love Hall as a player. I think he yeah. he brings such a dynamic element of offense to any team that he's on, especially having the opportunity now where he doesn't need to put the team on his back. He could be a, a I hate saying secondary scorer, but right. secondary contributor. Yeah. Um, and even that, he's still not. He, he's he's just not there. Mm-hmm. Um. I wonder what they'll do in the offseason. Yeah. Because I think yeah, I they like mention that. I think they like Bertuzzi a lot. Um, yeah. I joke that are we, you know, was it 2010 Taylor Tyler? And here we are <laughs> talking yeah, Taylor right. Tyler. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's going to be interesting to see. I, I, before the series started, I truly believed, and I, I still do. I, I, you know, game one, this, it's a long, hopefully a long run for this team. Um, I truly believe that Hall will be a difference maker in the mm-hmm. postseason. He's yeah. motivated. He wants to win. Um, he knows that he has something to prove. Um, but I, I just think we need to we we need to see it. There's only so yeah. much you can talk about and actually yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, definitely already seeing a lot of trade Taylor resign Tyler talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am unabashedly a huge Tyler Bertuzzi fan and have been for mm-hmm. a long time since he played here in Guelph, won an OHL yep. championship, went to Detroit, won a Calder cup with uh, Grand Rapids. His first taste of NHL playoff action last night. And uh, he definitely did not disappoint. He seems mm-hmm. like a guy who's kind of made to be a Boston Bruin. Mm-hmm. Um, now just to wrap up, I don't want to look too far ahead. Obviously only one game, but the mm-hmm. other Atlantic division, Division series begins tonight, Toronto, Tampa. Wanted to get your quick thoughts on this one. Uh, is this the year the Maple Leafs finally win a round, or uh, is Tampa going to just uh, dash their hopes and dreams once again here in the first round? What, what are your thoughts on that one? This is the year Toronto finally wins. Yep. Yeah, I, I think so. I This is not a strong Tampa Bay team. Um, mm-hmm. I... I, I think what will hurt Toronto or what could hurt Toronto, it'll always be goaltending. It'll always be defense. There's no concerns up front. Like that's a great forward group. And then you add guys like Ryan O'Reilly, Nolachari. Those guys are built for the postseason. Um, Mm. Truly. I mean, you think about obviously the Blues Stanley Cup win in 2019. I'd argue that Achari was one of the most important Bruins in that run Mm -hmm. as well. Um, You you got, you you now have guys who have, who have been there and, and know what it takes. Um, from the Tampa Bay side, you know, Vasilevsky is still one of the greatest goaltenders yeah. in the world. Um, which version of him will show up? I don't think he was the problem this year with this team. Um, I, I, I go back to that. Um, the 
uh, the game where Cooper benched the entire, like all of his right, key players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Um, you know, sort of to prove a point, the next game happens and you're like, oh, you know, they're going to, you're going to show what they're made of. And I yeah. think they were shut out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Pretty bad, it, too, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, it wasn't a, a statement on their part, for sure. No, so I, so I do think that, I do think this is the year Tampa advances. I think it'll still take them seven games. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, excuse me, Toronto advances. Toronto, Toronto, yeah. yeah. I think it still will take them seven games. Um, it'll be a good series. You know, I, I always love watching the off days when the Bruins aren't on. Yeah, Good yeah. competitive hockey, and there are so yep. many good series yeah. this round. Yep, and uh, Rangers Devils gets underway mm-hmm. tonight as well. That one should be unreal, and I'm excited to watch to watch that one for sure. Um, excited about you being on the podcast and uh, the project that you're working on. Do you want to briefly mention that before we uh, before we sign off? Yeah, so I uh, this is I think the first time I'm saying this. Uh, I'm world writing exclusive, a book. exclusive, <laughs> just for you, Ian. Uh, I'm, I'm actually writing a book about the Bruins season. Um, it's been in the works now since the off season, um, uh, not knowing what I was going to expect writing this book. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, it was originally going to be about one last run with this championship core. Like once Bergeron and Krejci resigned, it was, it seemed like a pretty obvious story. Yeah. Um, had no idea the season would turn out the way that it did. So, yeah. um, I've been writing it now since, uh, the summer it's, two thirds of the way done. Um, so really excited to, you know, continuous, continuous, continuously write it. Um, you know, obviously the editing process and talking to players and transcribing those interviews is a lot of really good stuff. So, um, that's all really, I can say at yeah, this time. I, I don't, you know, we'll hopefully, uh, hopefully next year we're looking at, I think a release, but, um, yeah, really, really excited about it. For all you Ted Lasso fans out there, Mike's basically the uh, Trent Krim of uh, the Boston Bruins this season. Can I tell you, <laughs> we are behind on, on Ted Lasso, and we watched my wife and I watched this episode. If it wasn't, uh, I think it was Sunday night. Yeah, and, like we saw it happening. It like, <laughs> hey, this is what you're doing, right? That's like, hilarious. Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't had any exactly. altercations where like <laughs> yeah. a, a player like approaches me yet, but. Maybe no, that'll come. Uh, no assistant coaches screamed you out of the room or anything. Not yet. Oh, you know what good. though? It's a, the playoffs are it, the playoffs. Chris are Kelly still, just still saying, "Get out of here!" Oh, I that's know. hilarious. I, yeah. Oof, man. Well, Mike, uh, thank you so much again for for taking some time to chat, and uh, hopefully, it's a long playoff run. I'll hit you up again so that we can chat maybe in rounds two, three, hopefully four as well, and uh, let people know where they can find you on uh, on Twitter if they want to follow along with your coverage. Yeah, please do. It's at Mike McCauley. There's no space in my name. At Mike McCauley. Two C's, one L. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for uh, tuning in today. I'll be back tomorrow to preview game two and uh, catch all the latest on Locked On Bruins, part of the Locked On Network, your team every single day.